Hey Zoo fans, Happy New Year and welcome to Tecton Zoo 2022. I hope you had a great Christmas. I had a lovely break and I've spent my time since then spamming these new decals all over the zoo. I absolutely love them. They add so much to the realism. Today's not about decals though. We're going to be adding a habitat for one of the cutest animals in the game, the adorable Arctic Fox. So I've wanted to add these guys into the zoo ever since they came out in the North America pack but I've been back and forth as to whether to add an arctic area into the zoo or not mainly because of the huge space requirements for the polar bear I uh, just wasn't sure whether I was going to have enough room to put a arctic area into the zoo with everything else that I've got planned but I knew I wanted to get the arctic foxes in so I decided in the end not to have an arctic area and instead to have a standalone habitat for these guys I saw a while ago a habitat that I really liked. Um, I think it's an early 20th century modern aviary in uh, the Auckland Zoo. I don't know if it's still there. The reference photo I have is from 1990, but it's just a really, really nice, simple, clean build that I like the look of. Uh, and one thing that we don't have in Tecton for obvious reasons is aviaries um, and obviously zoos tend to have small aviaries all over the place scattered throughout the zoo so I thought it'd be really good to get one of those into the zoo maybe a few more but have it so it's been retrofitted for these arctic foxes um, if it sounds a bit weird putting a fox in an aviary um, hopefully it will make sense when it's done I'm imagining that initially this aviary would have been double-sided. I think there were eight uh, species of bird kept in here in the Auckland Zoo. Um, so in this version it's double-sided so there would have been eight at the front and eight at the back and then I've just got rid of the partition between the two and made a pretty sizable habitat actually for these arctic foxes. I think it's just the right size for them. You can see here this is actually made out of two different materials. <laughs> we've gone crazy with this build. Um, so we've got the dry stone wall with some of the temple blocks above it for the base of the structure which is how it is in the original and then some of the lovely white concrete for the rest of it so it's going to be a bit of a older style build than some of the rest of the zoo incorporating some more traditional building materials as well as the uh, the white concrete and then i'm going to raise the terrain all the way through the inside of the habitat so it's at the guest viewing level so that you get a really good view of the foxes. It's such a help when you learn how to use the terrain tool properly, the terrain stamp. It was a long time of me playing this game before I sort of realized how powerful this was, especially using the advanced move tool in conjunction with the stamp. It lets you get really clean designs like this. Had to remove the paths to be able to use that tool. So crossing my fingers, putting them back in, and they actually went back in to the same place they were in originally, which was nice. And then we're gonna work on the front of the structure, increase the height a little bit so that we can get the roof in, and just being really careful with all the plaster pieces so that we can get a really clean look to it, which can be tricky because the column pieces have got rounded edges and the, uh, the panels have got completely flat edges, so, um, takes a while to get those to line up perfectly, but I think it's important to give it that clean look that I'm going for This was originally going to be a bit further into the zoo um, More towards where the cheetah conservation center is that you can see in the background But I wanted to do what a lot of zoos do with aviaries Which is use them to sort of line paths like this so that there's no wasted space in the zoo So rather than setting aside a large area for it I've slotted this in on the path by the anniversary lemur house uh, So it takes up less space And just make sure there's no wasted space in the zoo Because we want to get as much in to this area as we can before we're finished Behind this is going to be the nocturnal house That we discussed in the tour episode a few weeks ago That's going to be a pretty big build There's going to be uh, three animals in there plus all the backstage stuff as well. So that is gonna sit behind this uh, and that prevents this and the nocturnal house from taking up too much room. Gonna copy the walls around now to the rest of the structure. The part that you can see away to the right where you are here is gonna be their den and where the keeper access is. And then the whole front of it will be outside. Arctic foxes get pretty far south by Arctic standards. Uh, you can find them on Iceland. So having spent a very pleasant week in Iceland, in pretty much in t-shirt 
most of the time uh, I can confirm that it gets pretty warm in Iceland in summer um, so I think these foxes are going to be pretty happy in the British climate but there will be a temperature controlled indoor area for them for when it gets too hot um, if it's touching 30 or whatever in summer uh, don't think they're going to enjoy that so they'll have a nice cool indoor area as well and there's some guest viewing in it so that when they're in there uh, they can still be seen you can ignore all the arctic wood walls by the way this is how i make my habitats uh, not sure if i mentioned this before but the way i always do it is make a simple square habitat based on the square meters that the animal needs to be happy and then i'll reshape that using the pieces that are already there to get the habitat the way that i want it to look so that i can be sure there's definitely going to be enough space for them in there I'll often make it bigger than it needs to be, but I know if I do that, it'll never be too small. Even if I'm building like a circular habitat, I'll still just make a big square and then build the habitat inside it so that there's no issues with space when I'm finished. It's nothing worse than making a massive build, uh, finishing it and then realizing it's not massive enough and you need to make loads of changes. So doing it this way prevents that from happening. I'm gonna put an archway in as well so that the foxes can get from the inside to the outside part of the habitat and I'll sink that down into the ground so it's more in keeping with the scale of these little guys and then it's onto the barriers so it's going to be chain link all the way around this habitat except for the indoor quarters which will have a glass viewing window don't use chain link a lot in this zoo but it's a good compromise it enables the guests to get really close to the animals and personally I actually prefer looking through uh, chain link than glass I guess because there's not an actual complete barrier like there is with glass. You've still got some sort of fresh air, so to speak, between you and the animal. I've made all the pieces the same length as the concrete pillars so that we're not using any of the in-game uh, separators for the chain link. And then we're going to make our own, which will more closely match the reference photo that I'm working from. Uh, I'm just increasing the height a little bit of the top part of the building as well so that there's more open viewing this is quite a tall build originally obviously as it had birds in it because uh, sometimes they're going to be flying so you need to look up uh, not much chance of the foxes doing that but um, the higher the uh, the viewing the more spacious it seems so i wanted to get that right it's a lot of fun building an aviary i've not built one um, since i made london zoo 1985 when i built about a thousand of them <laughs> Um, so yeah, I enjoyed this build. Apologies for the state of my voice in this video, by the way. Got a bit of a cold, as you can probably tell. But let's talk about 2022. I've got a lot of big plans for this year, including a new series, which will be starting at some point fairly soon, although it's going to be pretty uh, involved. So it might be a while before I get that started. And of course, finishing Tecton Zoo, which we will be doing uh, whenever it is finished. Still a lot of things to build, so that'll be a, uh, a while away yet, do not worry. We are currently sat just a few subscribers away from the magic number of a thousand. So thank you as always to everyone who has subscribed. And if you haven't, you know what to do. The channel schedule won't be changing. We're still gonna have Planet Zoo Saturdays, either Tecton Zoo or something else in Planet Zoo. And I'll still be making some Jurassic World Evolution 2 videos as well, because I've really enjoyed making those. Got a few uh, things up my sleeve in that regard. But let's get back to today's build. So that's the front done. We're going to move on and take care of the roof now. I can't actually see the roof in the reference photo that I'm working from. So I've decided to mesh over it. A, it's in keeping with the Avery uh, theme. And secondly, it allows weather to actually affect the inside of the habitat which is really important with these Arctic foxes because I want to see lots of them in the snow. Um, and if they've got a solid roof, uh, there's not going to be any snow. And I don't like using the fake snow in the game um, just because I don't think I've ever seen it in a zoo or certainly not done, uh, you know, sort of completely realistically like it is in the game. So I want to make sure that snow can actually get through this roof, which the foxes will be happy with. Uh, and if for any reason they decide that they don't want to be in the snow, uh, they've got their indoor quarters, which will have a glass roof. These dividers are just slightly thinner than the default ones, which is why I've made my own, because I prefer the look like that. And I'm going to use a piece uh, that I certainly wouldn't normally use in this zoo, which is the classic balustrade to make um, the top of this wall thing here. Uh, I really like how thin it is and it matches the color of the concrete fairly well. It just works really nicely to get a ledge on here and closely match the habitat that I'm basing this on. Get these back down. 
and that's the outside of the habitat pretty much finished what I'm going to do now is move on to some more of these incredible decals that they've just added into the game to really give the feeling that this habitat has been there for quite a while I've only just discovered these moss pieces as well didn't see these when I first had looked through when we were making the fallow deer park oh my god they are so good they are absolutely perfect for covering up the joins between paths and habitats like I'm doing here um, I've been using the, the small rubble pieces to do that in lots of areas in the zoo um, which looks pretty cool but um, it's quite a uh, strong look um, and this is a lot more subtle especially for an older habitat like this I think this ties us in really nicely this is definitely one of the best things that Frontier have added to the game at any point as far as I'm concerned especially how you can colour match them so that they exactly match the walls that you're working with so I'm just going to put a really subtle weathering on the paintwork at the bottom of this column here and uh, yeah it just looks so good we're going to need standoff barriers as well um, don't want people sticking their fingers through the fences getting them nibbled off by a fox so um, these will need to go in there I normally use these aquatic fences for this purpose I like the way they look and they're quite generic so they go well with any type of habitat really they're a bit more modern looking which is fine because these would have been added when the Avery was retrofitted to hold the Arctic foxes and then you can't get or I can't get anyway the um, terrain right up to the path so I'm going to use some mulch pieces to hide the gap there once they're all planted up that looks really good then we're going to put a concrete floor into their indoor area for easier cleaning etc just copy this all the way around and this is really useful for covering up any holes in the terrain and just giving that really clean look that you want from an indoor area which for me anyway is one of the things that's hardest to master or <laughs> just get fairly good at like I am um, not sure I've mastered it yet then we'll put in the glass roof that I mentioned and then it is on to planting up the inside of the habitat which is always one of my favorite bits of any build uh, it's kind of overwhelming when you first start so many options in terms of foliage and things like that but once you get into it it is a lot of fun there's no room for any large evergreen trees inside the habitat obviously so I've put a really big one just behind it so that when you look at it from the front you really get that sort of uh, arctic very northerly feel to it using some of the new um, vegetation that we've got as well which I really like going to put a lot of that at the back so it looks really lush and full but then leave the vast majority of the habitat at the front pretty bare um, obviously with these being arctic foxes they hardly live in uh, you know forests or jungles or anything like that they used to pretty bare terrain so I want them to have a lot of room to run around in but we don't want the enclosure itself looking bare so I've used a couple of pretty sizable trees sort of hidden away under the terrain as well we'll fill the inside of the habitat with a few more decals to give it that vintage look uh, just these few finishing touches and that is the arctic fox avery done so thank you as always for watching you'll see it in its full uh, glory in the end cinematics and i will see you next time where we will be building something rather bigger in the zoo thank you for watching see you later